All right, guys. We're going to fire this guy up today. It's nasty out, but it's really the only day I have a chance to actually uh, let some ribs go and dig into these things. Um, uh, I know a lot of people have been asking. Um, just a lot going on. Um, I have some I have grills to build. And right now, materials are backed up and so far out that it's putting everything behind. Um, you know, and it's just, it's just been a mess. Not to mention I'm disassembling all of this out here. So that's why it doesn't look like it normally does. Um, we're in the process of house hunting. There's, there's just a lot going on, man. So, um, but I want to see how this thing runs. So I'm going to kind of put, um, uh, put it through a couple of different types of paces. Now I did get some info on it. Um, it is called the Toro. Um, this is a prototype, uh, so what you see may not be what will end up. Um, it is planned to be um, available in Academy Sports uh, from Old Country Barbecue Pits. It, um, it's essentially just a tester, um, you know, give some input, you know, anything like that. Um, there's a few things that, without me starting it, are kind of glaring at me. But I understand by a manufacturing standpoint, you know, they use certain tooling. I mean, essentially, it's a Brazos. The, um, uh, the intake door, I think, is really um, what I envision being the, um, uh, the fault to it, in my opinion. Um, just the fact that um, I get they're trying to keep their, their tooling right. They're, you know, everything the same so they could just bang them out. Um, but if it was a little bit wider, so the lower grill, um, charcoal rack, uh, wood rack, whatever you want to call it from the center of the pit could actually pull out some. So you'll be able to load coal, get your fire going, this and that, and then slide it back in, I think would be just, I mean, it would just make more sense to me as opposed to, you know, opening the lid pulling out the lower racks, lighting your fire in there, um, just that kind of stuff. You know, it's, uh, it seems a little bit cumbersome to do that. But other than that, um, just by, you know, visually and looking at it, that's really about the only thing that I can see um, that would annoy me, I, I think uh, would be the best word. I mean, I'm not saying it's necessary to do that, but it would just, it would just make more sense. But like I said, from a manufacturing standpoint, all they got to do is cut out the same intakes and doors and things like that, that they put on their, on their smokers, on the Brazos, on the, on the Picos, all those. So I get it. You know, I get why it's that size, but it would sure be nice, man. Half inch more on each side, be able to pull that rack out, load it up with your coal, get it lit, and then just slide everything on in, you know? Um, but Hey, that'll be some input that I will put in whether they take it, they take it, you know, but, uh, so what we're going to do, I got three racks of ribs. I got uh, salt and pepper chili. Um, I have just a straight up OG kind of uh, smoky, um, you know, paprika type, uh, you know, OG barbecue rub. Um, and then I have uh, lemon pepper. So I'm going to do three racks of baby backs on here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get a fire lit indirect over here. And uh, I'm going to let it roll, throw some smoke at these guys. That way I can see how the... Uh, um, you know, how the draw is, how that kind of stuff works. Um, looking at it, it should actually draw pretty good, but that is a pretty big chamber. So I, you know, even if they just added maybe, I'm just speculating right now, but just by the length of the chamber and where the intake is, you know, I mean, I get they're trying to keep things easier to package, you know, and less, less, you know, footprint on the floor, but they can easily take this stack up at least so it's the same height as the uh, counterweight and it wouldn't affect anything, you know, with regards to, um, you know, footprints or trading or anything like that. And I think that um, taller stack would probably draw a little bit more. But like, again, I'm just speculating just from things I've experienced myself. So, but anyway, back to what the hell I was doing. Like I said, indirect, we're going to light some coal up in here. Uh, I'm going to throw a split in, let it burn down, um, probably do some cherry maybe, um, definitely oak, you know, and uh, we're just going to throw some smoke at them for a while until we get a nice bark set up. I'm going to start mopping and uh, 
we'll just uh, go through just like a smoke. At the end, I'm going to grill them off because I love grilled ribs. So um, if you've been around, you all know that. But um, like normally, I would just toss these on the Santa Maria and just grill them like I normally do, you know. Um, slow roast them at the beginning, you know, grill them towards the end. But I want to test this thing out, see how she runs. So that's what we're doing. Let's let it fire in her. All right, so first off, we're going to open everything up. As I, like I was stating here, like if I could pull this out, get my fire going, you know, even with like, I don't know, it would just make things a lot easier. But anyway, I'm going to open this guy up. What we're going to do, one more thing is a stopper or a change in the angle on the counterweight. Um, I mean, I'm short, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll give them that. But um, I have a hell of a time reaching out like that. Um, so by the time the door is all the way open, I mean, I'm almost leaning over the grill. Not a problem when it's cold, but when it's lit and I got a ripping fire in here, you know, I mean, I'm not afraid of, you know, catching a little uh, road scars from some charcoal or some wood, but uh, um lighting my shirt on fire that's a whole different story you know what I mean so uh but anyway I'm going to pull the top rack out for right now I have not seasoned this yet so I'm going to take this time to uh um at least get the grates and uh get some of this other stuff burnt off of it so we'll just get a nice fire going so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some coal here I'm going to keep it down on this end. I don't think I'll need much to drive the BTUs, considering it is all quarter inch. So I'm going to keep this right over here. And then I'm going to use my half stack here. And I'll fire the rest up. Um, which is mostly powder from what it looks like. Um, I do have some, uh, some of the jerk charcoal um, that I picked up. I have yet to even be able to open the box on it, um, but I've heard some real good things about it. Um, jerk, J-U-R-K. So um, I know a few people that have used it. Um, uh, seems to be great stuff. Real cool, chill guy. So I'll, um, I'll probably break into that here. So, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw two tumbleweeds down there. Yep. You could probably only use one, but I ain't got time for that. So let me grab a lighter. Oh, wait, I do have one. Never mind. Never mind. I'm going to get these guys going here. And I'm just going to throw my half stack on top of that. And let this get going. I'll dump it in, throw a, uh, a split in there, and um, we'll be cooking. So uh, in the meantime, I'm going to just coat these down with some oil real quick and give it all a quick coat. Let that kind of burn off a little bit. Let me build a nice bed coal. You know, typically I would season much longer, but hey, I ain't got time for all that. So uh, another thing we're going to do, get everything opened up, so. We'll be back. All right. So I got some nice red ones underneath. I did add some of that jerk uh, charcoal here, this, this stuff. So um, what I'm going to do is I put a little extra coal in there. I figured I'd get the BT, BTUs up a little bit. So I'm going to dump these out. I'm going to throw just a small split of oak in and let that thing ramp up a little bit. Um, give it some serious flow. And uh, just kind of just do a quick burn, you know, just just to kind of uh, light some of it up a little bit. And then I'll dial it down, throw some cherry in there, and get the ribs on. So I got everything coated in oil. We're ready to go. I know this isn't my, uh, my typical burn-in and seasoning process, but, you know, in all honesty, I don't know if all the times I've been doing that, it's really necessary to do... All that stuff that I did. <laughs> so I'm all about simplicity lately, boys and girls. That's what that's what uh, 
what life gives you time for. You know what I mean? So, all right. So we got a better coal in there. Got some nice red ones. Got our raw ones that are still black on top. So then we'll light up. And I'm going to keep this open. And I'm just going to throw just a small split of oak in there. Um, again, I'm going to let this, uh, let everything stay open until I see a good ignition on my, uh, on my stick of oak in there. And then I will close the lid, but I'm still going to keep my exhaust open and I'm going to keep my intake open. Uh, that way I can get uh, just some nice fire, get some heat going in there and, uh, get a nice little burn going on. So. So we have some nice ignition going on, as you can see. So we're going to close this down. Oh, shit. Man, that thing's heavy. And it looks like we got some, uh, some pretty nice draw. So that smoke should clean out. Um, it's blue, but it's thick. So I'm going to let that clean out, let that burn in, let that temp get up a little bit. Like I said, I'm going to keep this open, uh, keep that fire fed with some air some good oxygen in there and uh let the temps roll for a little bit once i notice it starts to dip then i'll balance it all out and we'll get some food on her all right so just a quick check back it's been about 15 minutes maybe um rolling at about 425 um now just for reference that gauge um is not the gauge that came with the with the grill itself it was it was just plugged you know it allows you to put whatever gauge you want in not to mention it's a way to keep um, costs down, you know, on uh, old countryside. Um, and most people, you know, well, I, I shouldn't say most. A lot of people are just going to replace any type of factory gauges with the tell true anyway, if they're, you know, a hardcore about their temps and all that other good stuff. But uh, that's just the old cataracts gauge, the one that uh, just gets floated around here and I stick it in whatever I'm testing or messing around with. So, but, um, just from what I'm seeing right now, um, I think I was off base uh, when it comes to the draw. Um, it actually has a, a, a really, really nice draw, man. It, it's working quite well. So um, um, I'm just going to assume uh, with a fire on this side, I'm still going to have a decent amount of heat over on this side uh, just from the exhaust. You know, typically, you know, in a smoker, you, you do get more heat near the exhaust anyway. So it might be a pretty good balance. But um, that's just, you know, assuming I'm not going to run probes in there. It's a grill. It's not a smoker. I know a lot of people, a couple of people actually commented on it. Um, but um, it is a grill. It is a charcoal grill. But like any grill, you can always smoke with indirect. So that's what we're doing today. And we're going to do some grilling. So, but uh, like I said, I think I was off base when it comes to the draw. I got some really, really nice draw. Um, just beautiful blue, wispy smoke. It's really nice. Um, temperature's climbing nice and high. Um, steel is getting heated up real well. So it should uh, it should plateau here soon. And like I said, I'm going to let that just go for about a half an hour or so. Just really kind of burn any, anything off. I'm not smelling anything. Um, anything funky anyway. It all just smells like nice, clean, I'm, you know, oak. My cologne, man. So I like it. But uh, um like I said, I'm going to let this go for about 30 minutes. Then I'm going to shut the intake. I'm going to make some adjustments and um, uh, just kind of get her dialed down a little bit. I want to roll these ribs at around 275. Um, you know, throw some smoke at them for a little bit. Set up my bark, all that other good stuff. I'm just going to whip up a mop. Um, uh, I like on, on these kind of uh, ribs, I like to use um, Snow's um, barbecue mop. It's awesome. Uh, onion, butter, a uh, little mustard, little apple cider vinegar, a little Worcestershire. It's a, uh, it's, it's a, it's a really good mop, man. It adds great flavor, especially when you're doing like salt and pepper ribs and things like that. You know, um, there's a few videos I've done that has recipes. I'm sure, you know, if you Google uh, Snow's barbecue mop, you'll find their recipe all over the place too. I essentially do it the same way. So um, that's about it. So let's let this go. Um, I'm going to wait for this temp just to dip slightly and then i'll start trying to uh uh wrangle this thing in and get it under control and uh we'll get some meat on it 
All right, guys. We are ready. Got a nice burn. It's cooled down. Got a nice bed of coal here. See what I'm saying about that opening? Look at my stretch, man. Anyway, um, I did a season on that top rack as well and put that in there. So what I'm going to do, I will say, I, I do not, I am not a fan of expanded metal in grills, man. I'm just not. I'd much rather do a roll of steel, square steel, something. Um, so, got a split of cherry here. Oh, shit, burnt myself. I'm just going to toss that in there. I'm going to leave this side open just while that ignites, while we get these ribs on. Check these guys out. Oh, man. Taste the rainbow, boys and girls. We got salt, pepper, green chili. We just got some uh, just barbecue rub, paprika, you know, your standard, you know, your OG. And then we got some lemon pepper. So that's how we're rolling today. So I'm just going to toss this, guys. Right in the back, get them nice and tight. Should have plenty of room here. Be able to keep that smoke wrapping around them. Tighten your meat up. I'm putting the fat ends towards the fire, of course. We got, uh, here, let me wipe my hands here. All right, so we got some ignition on our cherry. So let's close her down. And over here, still got a nice burn going. So I'm going to go like that. And that's what I found. It kind of stabled out my temperatures. Exhaust wide open, of course. Like so, so, and uh, should be getting a nice burn. So right now she's rolling at about 225, but it's climbing right up there. It's probably it's probably going to spike to around 300, and uh, I'll just let that kind of balance out. I'm just going to ride it out. It's not that big of a deal. She should settle in around 275, or that's when I'll start uh, paying attention anyway, and uh, try to wrangle her in and get her under control and just let her roll there for a while. So, all right, guys. So we've been rolling here, I don't know, about an hour, a little less. She dialed in real nice at 275. Got some nice smoke rolling through her. Um, so I just checked. Look like uh, we've got a nice uh, dry set going on. So now we're going to make sure they stay more moist. So, but first I'm going to take this top shelf up. It's just in my way now. Bring you guys over here. Yeah, nice dry set on these. Really, really nice. We should be able to mop them without uh, hurting our bark too much. Let me grab my mop. So I got this all made. She's just sitting in here, taking on a little smoke, all that other good stuff. And let's give her a little love. Just gonna pat, just keep some moisture on them things. Having my mop in here also adds some moisture to the, uh, to the grill itself, you know, so. Not going to get crazy. I just want to keep some moisture on them. If you got a nice set like that, then that's when your meat can start drying out. I do plan on wrapping these in some butcher paper. And then we're going to unwrap them and we're going to grill them up. 
get a slight little char. All that other good stuff. Not brushing. Just blotting. That back rack right there, that's mine. After I sample the other ones. Love salt and pepper ribs. All right. Put him back where he was. And that's about that. So here's our bed we got going on. We got that split still burning in there real nice. Putting off that smoke. That's all. So I'll let that go. And I don't know. I'll check every half hour, 45 minutes. Just give a little peek. If I notice them drying out a little bit, give them a little bit of a mop. So we're just going to push through that. I don't know. Until I see the color I like on them ribs. Once we see that color we like, we'll wrap them up in some butcher paper and uh, toss them back in there. Um, at that time, I'll probably throw another split in. Um, I might, might have to toss one in here, um, you know, within the next hour or something like that, but we'll see how it rolls, but, um, I'll toss another split in there, spring that temp up, you know, right around that three mark, 325 maybe. And, uh, that way I'll have a real nice coal bed over here, uh, to be able to grill on too. So, um, when I leveled them coals out, they should be about the length of the racks. You know, I figured that'd just be easier that way. So, and we'll just take them over. We'll move them over to that side. Let them grill off for a little bit and uh, dig in. So, but so far, um, this thing's been running good. I mean, I've been running around. I got a whole bunch of stuff going on here today and I haven't really had to maintain it. Um, I'm coming out and checking on it a little bit more than what I normally would because I've never used it before. So, um, I don't know what the hell it's going to do. So, but it's been, it's been pretty good, man. I mean, it's, it's a barrel of steel. What could possibly go wrong? You know what I mean? So, but uh, other than that. That's about it. We're going to let them roll. All right, guys. So it's been, I don't know, a couple hours. I just spiked the heat. Um, I'm going to do one more mop while the heat is still climbing. That's what we got going on so far. Looking damn fine, man. So this thing's been trucking along. I'm, uh, I don't know. She works great. Really know much else I can say about it. No, uh. No glaring complaints or anything like that or nothing jumping out at me. I haven't wanted to punt it under the over the fence yet or anything, so it's always a good sign. So I'm just going to give these a letter mop. I'm going to get my uh, butcher paper situated, um, and then I'm just going to wrap them up. So um, when you guys come back, we will be ready to uh, roll these things off. We should have a real nice coal bed over there. Um, spiking the heat to about 325 um, for the wrap. And then, like I said, we'll have a nice coal bed then developed over here for uh, a little grill session and uh, finish these things off right. So, just like that. Look good, look good. So, all right, I'm going to let those things uh, just roll, like I said, for another few minutes or so. Let that sink in, and uh, I'm going to wrap them up. All right, so here we are. Uh, it's probably been about an hour or so, something like that. Here, let me let the dogs out. All right. Let's see what we got. All right. Already opened up the side over here. Nice 
guys flexing all of them. I say we're good to go. Let's do this just like this. Pull these out. Oh yeah, beautiful. Pull back. Looking good. Looking good. All right. There's one down. Put that back there for right now. The OG ones. Two down. And my rack. Oh yeah. I was a little bit worried about these ones. These ones have a, these are a little bit thicker, a little bit bigger rack than the other guys. Beautiful. All right. Throw them there. Throw them out. All right. So I'm going to just let these grow for a little bit. Probably about five minutes or so on the one side. Flip them over. Should be good to go. All right. There we are. Five minutes or so. Just a little char on both sides. Check these guys out. Oh, man. Oh, man. This one here. She wants to uh, come apart. The old lemon pepper ones. The vinegar is... Uh, Real good for softening them ribs up. And then these guys right here. These guys I'm going to give a little more love. Said those ones are a little bit thicker. Break them down a little bit. But other than that, that's about it. It's really not a recipe video. Just kind of breaking in this thing. See what it's all about. Mm. Super nice flavor, man. Stand out here, pick at these things all night. Nice color. Good stuff, guys. You know, real talk, all in all, I'm, uh, I don't know. I, I think the thing works great. It really does. Enough for three racks on an indirect. You really can't beat that. Probably could even put more if I wanted to ride them up. So that's it. Um, just a couple of things, like I mentioned at the beginning, that I'll definitely uh, pass on that information. They can do with it as they wish, you know, but that's about it. So I'll throw some more stuff down on this, but for right now, that's it. That's all I got.